Welcome. Now that we have our doors and start positions set up, we're ready to create the code that we need to transition between rooms. Go to our Elizabeth object, and we're going to make our Elizabeth object persistent. That way, when we move between rooms, she still exists. Add an event, a collision event with the door, and drag over a code action. Now, right now, our door and start position objects don't have any information inside of them. Let's go into our town and go to our door object. If we right click on this specific instance right here, we can see there's a creation code option. This code is specific to this single door instance. That means only this one will run this code. So let's open up the creation code for that instance. And we're going to set a variable. Next room equals room west meadow. So that's the room that we want this door to take us to is room west meadow. Now in our Elizabeth collision event with the door we can say room go to other, referring to the door, next room. So we can get the room that we want to go to from the other door. This system is a pretty good system, I think, for setting up transitions between rooms. The main benefit is it makes it pretty easy and visual to set up your doors and start positions. You just need to make sure and set the creation code for each one. Oops. But you don't have to remember a bunch of different x, y coordinate positions. It's, it makes it simpler that way, so I like it. Now if we run the game, we should be able to come over here and travel to the next room. But you can see because Elizabeth's persistent, it actually remembers her x and y position from the previous room, so we appeared clear over here. And that's not what we want. We want to show up over here where our start position is, right? And you can see we got an error because this door doesn't, I, I ran into this door, but it doesn't actually have the next room yet. To fix that, you can go into your door object, add a create event, and really quickly just give it a next room. We'll set the default next room equal to room town. That way, if we haven't set up that door yet, it will take us back to the town. So our door is working, but our start positions aren't working yet. Now we need to go into our Elizabeth object and create a new variable. This variable will be called last room, and for now we'll just set it equal to room. We need to set the last room inside of our start positions as well. So right click on the start position, do creation code, last room equals room west meadow. So this start position should be the location that we start at when the last room we were in was the west meadow. Go into the west meadow room and let's set up the door and start position here. So for the door, we'll set next room equal to room town. And for the start position, creation code, we'll set last room equal to room town. In the same way that we did for the doors, we can set a default last room inside of the start position. We'll just set it equal to room town. Just so we can prevent errors. Okay, so these two instances are both, if you, you can see if you hover over them, you can get the creation code for them. Uh, we have last room and next room, they're both equal to room town. So the door and start position objects have the right information, but Elizabeth, our Elizabeth object still doesn't actually use that information when she enters a new room. Inside of our Elizabeth object, we already have a room start event. 
open up that event and at the very start we're going to move to the start position first we want to make sure that the start positions exist if the start positions do exist then we can loop through them and we'll do that using the with statement with object start position this will actually run this next bit of code inside of every single start position object now we're going to compare Elizabeth's last room with the start positions last room so if Elizabeth was in the town room and she comes into West Meadow, it's going to loop through all of the start positions and try and find the start position that also has a last room of town. So if last room equals other dot last room. Now this is an important thing to know. Since we're inside of the start position, last room refers to the start positions last room. Other, when you're inside of a width, refers to the, to the object or instance outside of that width. So right here is Elizabeth's code and Elizabeth's scope. So other actually refers to Elizabeth. So other dot last room. Elizabeth's last room. Object Elizabeth. Or you could do other as well. Other. But we'll just, yeah, we'll do other other.x equals x and other.y equals y. So this says Elizabeth's x position now equals the start position's x position and Elizabeth's y position now equals the start position's y position. Now we can update Elizabeth's last room. Update the last room. Since we're no longer in the width statement, we'll just do last room and it refers to Elizabeth. And we'll set it equal to the new room that we have just entered. Okay. Run the game and we should be able to navigate between the rooms and you can see that Elizabeth starts in the correct start position for each room. This system right here isn't perfect. Like I said, I like it because it's easy. You can set up the objects visually and see where they are in the room. Uh, if you had two doors inside of the town that both went to the West Meadow, you'd have to distinguish a little bit more. You'd have to add a new variable called door number or something and make Elizabeth match that. So she collided with this door. She needs to match with this start position. Uh, but for this case, it works pretty well. And we're ready to go on to the next lecture. Thank you guys for watching.